The question of our origins has fascinated humanity for centuries. Where did we come from? How did life on Earth, in all its diversity, come to be? These questions lie at the heart of one of the biggest debates in science and beyond, evolution versus creation. On one hand, we have the theory of evolution, which proposes that all living things share a common ancestor and have gradually changed over millions of years. This theory is supported by a large body of scientific evidence, from fossils to DNA analysis. On the other hand, we have creationism, which posits that the universe and life were created by a supernatural being. This belief stems from religious texts and interpretations. This essay delves into the core arguments of both sides examining the scientific evidence and the philosophical implications of each perspective. We will explore the mechanisms of evolution, such as natural selection and genetic variation, and discuss their limitations. We will also look at the complexity of life and the challenges it poses to evolutionary theory. This is not just an academic debate, it touches upon our fundamental understanding of the world and our place in it. It raises questions about the nature of science, the role of faith, and the very meaning of existence. By exploring both sides of the argument, we can gain a deeper appreciation for the complexity of this issue and develop more informed perspectives on our own origins. When scientists study evolution, they often employ two different approaches. The first approach focuses on small-scale changes that we can observe directly, such as bacteria developing resistance to antibiotics or insects, evolving camouflage to blend in with their surroundings. These changes, known as microevolution, are well-documented and relatively uncontroversial. They demonstrate the adaptability of living organisms to changing environments. The second approach, however, deals with larger-scale changes that are believed to have occurred over vast periods, leading to the formation of new species and even entirely new categories of life. This process, known as macroevolution, is based on the interpretation of fossil records, genetic similarities between different species, and other forms of indirect evidence. While microevolution is generally accepted, macroevolution is where the debate between evolution and creation becomes most pronounced. Critics of macroevolution argue that while small changes within a species are observable, there is no evidence of one species evolving into a fundamentally different one. They point to the lack of transitional fossils, the sudden appearance of new life forms in the fossil record, and the immense complexity of biological systems as challenges to the idea that gradual, unguided processes could produce such dramatic transformations. Proponents of evolution argue that the accumulation of small, gradual changes over millions of years can lead to significant evolutionary shifts. They point to the vastness of geological time and the power of natural selection to favor beneficial mutations. However, critics contend that there are limits to how much change can be achieved through these mechanisms. They argue that certain biological features like the human eye or the intricate mechanisms of blood clotting are too complex to have arisen through a series of random mutations and gradual selection. The debate hinges on the question of whether there are inherent limits to biological change. Can random mutations and natural selection really produce entirely new structures, functions, and body plans? Or are there boundaries beyond which these mechanisms cannot go? This question lies at the heart of the debate over the origin of species and the plausibility of large-scale evolutionary change. One of the most compelling arguments against unguided evolution lies in the sheer complexity of life at the cellular level. Each cell in our body is a microscopic marvel, containing intricate machinery that carries out a dazzling array of tasks. DNA, the blueprint of life, stores vast amounts of information in a highly efficient and compact manner. Proteins, the workhorses of the cell, fold into precise three-dimensional shapes to perform specific functions and countless other molecules interact in a highly coordinated manner to maintain the cell's life and carry out its functions. This level of complexity, critics argue, points to an intelligent designer rather than to random chance. The information content of DNA alone is staggering, comparable to a vast library of encyclopedias. It is difficult to imagine how such a sophisticated system could have arisen through a series of accidental mutations, even over billions of years. The origin of life itself remains one of the biggest mysteries in science. How did the first self-replicating molecules arise from a primordial soup of chemicals? How did the complex machinery of the cell come to be? 
These are questions that continue to puzzle scientists and fuel the debate between evolution and creation.